Hi everybody, uh, my name is not Tony Bramwell, it's Dean OV. How are you doing out there? I hope all is good. Today on my channel I'm going to be talking about Beatles EPs. Now what you see here is the Beatles um, EP CD box set. Just what it says on the box. So this is at least in June 1992. There's 14 EPs, 15 if you count the double one as Magical Mystery Tour, it has two in there. Um, so though the EP came out on a vinyl box set, originally seven inch vinyl box set on 7th December 1981. And it included a bonus EP of this, simply entitled The Beatles with the inner light on, Baby You're a Rich Man, She's a Woman and This Boy, all in stereo. So this is included in the EP box set. So I'm going to discuss these EPs and go through some facts and figures because I love all that stuff, don't you? So if we go back to 1963 now when these were originally released on vinyl and just before that, um, it was in March 1960 that a record retailer first published an EP chart and the last EP chart was on the 30th of November 1967. So roughly for seven and a half years there was an EP chart in the United Kingdom as well as a singles chart and album chart and the Beatles dominated it quite a lot. EP number one, Twist and Shout, released um, on the 12th of July 1963. This was number one for 21 weeks and actually sold so many copies. It was um, seen as the fourth best selling single of 1963 in the United Kingdom. After She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand and I don't know what the other one is. Do you know? This was also released on EP in Germany, Spain, New Zealand, Australia and Argentina. Tina, uh, there's the back of it. Uh, most of the cover notes, uh, reverse cover notes, even by Tony Barrow. So that's Tony Barrow that's done the notes on that. That was EP number one. Number two, the Beatles hits tracks from me to you, thank you, girl, please, please me, and love me do. Released the 6th of September 1963. Um, this uh, was in the charts for 43 weeks. Three weeks were at number one. And this is also released in Australia and New Zealand. Now, most of these EPs last for eight minutes plus. There are, is the odd one that lasts for longer, but most of them are eight minutes plus. EP number three, The Beatles number one. I saw her standing there, Misery, Anna and Chains, all off The Beatles' first album. Released the 1st of November 1963. This only got to number two was in the charts for 29 weeks and was also released in Argentina and New Zealand. Again, I'm talking about the original vinyls issued in the 60s, not these EPs that came out in, uh, I forgot the end, June 1992. This is what most EPs look like inside. All My Loving, EP number four, released the 7th of February 1964. This was number one for eight weeks and spent 44 weeks in the charts. Also available in Sweden, Australia and New Zealand. Sleeve notes again by Tony Barrow. Um, this is very important to me because it was the f my first introduction to the beat was on vinyl. My mother purchased this in 1964 using the same cover as with the Beatles. EP number five, Long Tall Sally. It's all cover versions on here. Long Tall Sally, I Call Your Name, Slow Down and Matchbox. Released on the 19th of June 1964 when the Beatles were in Australia, stroke New Zealand. Um, this didn't do well in the charts, but was also released in Spain and France. I've got this down, it's only reached number 16, which is shockingly bad considering you couldn't get those tracks anywhere else. Hard Day's Night, extracts from the film. Uh, released the 4th of November 1964. Um, also available in Australia, Spain, New Zealand and France. Contains the tracks I should have known better, If I Fail, Tell Me Why and I Love Her. Number one for two weeks, 30 weeks in the charts. Considering the Beatles sales of albums and singles and EPs in United Kingdom, it was incredible. There were many times when the Beatles number one, the singles, album and EP chart, um, not consecutively, at the same, at the, yeah, it is consecutive, at the same time. Stunning domination of the British charts, especially in 1963 stroke 64. 
Next EP, number seven, Hard Day's Night, extracts from the album this time. This was released two days later, the 6th of November 1964. Only got to number eight, and it was in the charts for 17 weeks. Um, it was also released in France as well. Any time at all, I'll cry instead. Things we said today and when I get home. EP number eight, Beatles for Sale, released the 6th of April 1965. It was number one for six weeks and clocks in over nine and a half minutes lengthwise. Also available in Australia and India. Tracks, No Reply, I'm a Loser, Rock and Roll Music and Eight Days a Week. Again, sleeve notes by Tony Barrow. And there you are, the tired Beatles in Hyde Park, taken by Robert Freeman. Beatles for Sale, number two, released the 4th of June, 1965. This only reached uh, number five in the charts. It's in the charts for approximately 24 weeks. Also available in Australia. I'll Follow the Sun, Babies in Black, Words of Love, and I Don't Want to Spoil the Party. There's no sleeve notes on this one. They're looking moody and tired again, aren't they? 1964 was an incredibly busy year for the Fabs. The Beatles Million Sellers, EP number 10, released the 6th of December 1965. This was number one for four weeks and spent 26 weeks in the charts and also released in New Zealand. Combined sales of the four singles on here, She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Can't Buy Me Love and I Feel Fine, are approximately 27 million. It also lists on the back uh, other Beatles EPs that are available. EP number 11, Yesterday, released 4th of March 1966, with Yesterday, Act Naturally, You Like Me Too Much, and It's Only Love on it. So you got one track from each Beatle singing it from the, the Beatles album. It's incredible, really, with, when you think with Yesterday. They released this in March 66, and the album came out, what was it, um, that eight months before in July 19. 65 so a massive long gap this was number one for six weeks and spent 13 weeks in the charts and also available in portugal spain and brazil but it had a different cover in brazil ep number 12 nowhere man released on the 8th of july 1966 that's about seven or eight months after the british album this got to number four was in the charts for 18 weeks the tracks on it are nowhere man Drive My Car, Michelle, and You Won't See Me. That clocks in at 11, over 11 minutes. That's, at the moment, that's the longest lasting Beatles EP. So as I say, most of them are um, eight or nine minutes, but that one was over 11. This is the big EP, uh, Magical Mystery Tour, released the 8th of December, 1967. Um, this didn't get to number one, um, because it got to number two on the singles chart. It was kept off the number one position at Christmas 67 because the Beatles were at number one with Hello Goodbye, which is also in Magical Mystery Tour towards the end. What's great about this EP, better than any other one, you get two discs. So you got disc one there and disc two. And basically, it's Magical Mystery Tour EP in mono and stereo. Plus, you've got the beautiful booklet in here. It really is nice for all the lyrics and the cartoon animated stuff from the film. By far the greatest EP. This is what many consider the most important one, though. This is just titled The Beatles. Um, originally released in the 7-inch vinyl box set at EP, 7th December 1981, containing stereo versions of The Inner Light, Baby You're a Rich Man, She's a Woman, and This Boy. Brilliant cover, isn't it, that was used on the single for Strawberry Fields and penny lane so that's the eps and i don't for sure i don't know if I've actually showed you the front of the box that's the front of the box you get a sticker on the back um and there's the side of the box cd bep14 i'm gonna get there's just one little other ep here the beatles aren't on this but i love this apple ep have you got this this is a, a cracking ep it came out in 1991 um you may have seen this it's quite hard to get but beautiful and uh, I'm going to get the CD falling out here. It's housed in there. Da, da, da. So this is the Apple EP limited edition four track CD by Apple Artists. Those were the days by Mary Hopkins. That's the way God planned it. Parts one and two by Billy Preston. Sour Milk Sea by Jackie Lomax. And Come and Get It 
by Bad Finger. This came out, as I say, in 1991 when they had the Apple's Greatest Hits CD vinyl also released. Um, recommend getting that. The Beatles aren't on it, but obviously it's an Apple release. Now, here's some facts and figures um, on EPs. I don't know if you're into stuff like this. And this is going back to the 60s when they came out. So um, this is most weeks on the chart year by year. In 1963, the Beatles weren't number one in the EP charts It um, for how long they'd been in the charts for that year. Number one was The Shadows, 152 weeks um, in 1963. The Beatles were down six on 47. But after 1963, they started dominating. For example, 1964, the Beatles spent 168 weeks in the British charts with um, their EPs. Second was the Rolling Stones. 1965, the Beatles were in the charts 111 weeks. Rolling Stones second again, 71. Third was Joan Baez. 66, Beatles number one, 66 weeks in the charts. Number two, Manfred Mann, 57, and The Seekers at 51. In 67, the Beatles weren't in the EP charts, but this is because Magical Mystery Tour was issued at the end of 1967. There's also... Um, Great facts here. Um, most top 10 hits by an artist. Cliff Richard had 17 and the Beatles were down in third place with 12. Above them were the Shadows. Most hits in the British EP charts in the 1960s. Cliff Richard had 23. The Shadows 19. 15 by Elvis Presley, not Costello. He wasn't around in the 60s. And the Beatles had 12. Um, most consecutive weeks on the charts consecutively, Nina and Frederick of 115 weeks. Uh, Beach Boy hits, 82 weeks. And the Beatles are quite low down on this. 57 weeks, Twist and Shout, which is still incredible, considering that's over a year. Other um, facts here, he says, looking at this. Most number one hits by an artist for, with EPs. The Beatles number one with eight. Elvis and Cliff and the Shadows each with four. Uh, most hits by a label was Columbia with 111. Then he got 51 weeks with uh, 51 hits by Decca, 48 by Pi, and 34 by Parlophone. This is what I find incredible. In the 1963 EP charts, the Beatles got to number one. I'll hold this up with um, my notes and that here. The Beatles got to number one the 25th of July with Twist and Shout. It was number one for 10 weeks. It was knocked off by the Searchers. Ain't going to kiss you for four weeks the beatles are number one again for three weeks with the beatles hits in november the beatles went back to number one again with twist and shout for 11 weeks the stones then knocked them off in february for three weeks but the beatles knocked them off with all my loving with eight weeks the stones then knocked the beatles off again in april for 11 weeks the beatles knocked the stones off with long tall sally which is number one for seven weeks then the stones knocked the beatles off with five by five for 15 weeks the Beatles in December knocked them off with A Hard Day's Night for two weeks. And then The Bachelors hit um, knocked the Beatles off for two weeks. So in 1964, in the EP charts, you only had The Stones, The Beatles and The Bachelors. Virtually all of that, <coughs> excuse me, was The Stones and Beatles. In 65, The Beatles started off number one with A Hard Day's Night for three weeks. Knocked off by The Stones, five by five for a week. Beatles back to number one again uh, for a week with A Hard Day's Night. And then in February, the Stones knocked them off again, five by five. And um, now, as the years progress up, up to 67, I'd say, there's, there's not many artists that have EPs at number one. So I've said the Stones and the Beatles and the Searchers, but you also get uh, Manfred Mann, uh, Donovan, the Kinks, the Seekers, the Beach Boys, the Walker Brothers, the Who, the Four Tops, Paul Jones and Elvis. There's no other artist um, that had another number one EP besides those artists that I just mentioned. So as I say, the Beatles absolutely smashed the British charts with singles, albums and EPs. EPs get forgotten a lot, but these, the sound on them, I cannot express how truly beautiful and incredible it is. So if you're missing these EPs, I would certainly recommend getting them. They're lovely to hold. Four tracks on each apart from um, the Magical Mystery Tour double EP plus the sleeve notes are interesting to read. Derek Taylor actually does the, the notes on Long Tall Sally, though Tony Barrow does virtually all the other ones. So, do you own the EPs? Have you, do you, have you got them on vinyl? Have you got them on CD? Um, will these be reissued? 
who knows i hope you enjoyed this um please uh, put thumbs up that really helps and subscribe if you haven't already if you look down below i haven't bothered putting the how to subscribe just go into my channel subscribe and do the thumbs up and join my facebook group which is um coming up the world of paul mccartney and the beatles and congratulations to australia and brazil in sir paul going to play there we want uk dates paul nowhere else just the uk also i have a paul mccartney seven inch box set um group on facebook called group 3000 you can only join it if you own the paul mccartney seven inch singles box and to join that you have to um apply and email me or message me on there with a photo of the box and with your number and that's the box number not your telephone number and also the test pressing i hope you enjoyed this on the eps um it's something that is overlooked because the beatles just dominated with singles and albums but in the united kingdom eps were massive and there were different eps issued around the world especially in america i haven't covered those um but i hope you enjoyed this as i say this has been about the beatles uh compact disc ep collection and thanks for watching let me know in the comments what you think any thoughts you have um or what you might like me to see do a video on so you can watch thanks again for watching this is dino v saying goodbye to you remember i'm not tony bramwell cheerio